Ah, damn. I forgot one more null check. Isn't there a better way to do this? Oh, wait. What about the null object pattern? This is from a project we already talked about in earlier videos, the Test Failure Analyzer. It is analyzing failing test cases from our CI-CD pipeline and it's creating defects out of it. Additionally, it sends some emails to our teams in some cases. And here's the code. We have all the business logic in the core project. We have a CLI project taking the command line arguments and interpreting them. And we have an IO project, which contains all the code doing the IO with the external services. In the business logic, we have the test failure processor. It gets all the failures from the test database. If there is a defect already, we will update the defect with a new occurrence. If there's no defect yet for this failure, we will create a new one. And in the end, we will notify our teams via email whether everything was successfully processed or whether there was any problem. Of course, we have some interfaces to interact with the external services as well as with the database and the mail server. And as mentioned in the IO project, we have the implementations of those. The code is of course a lot simplified so that we can focus on the actual design topic we want to discuss here. At some point during development, we saw the need to introduce a dry run option to be able to analyze some builds in real life without creating actual defects or sending really emails to anyone. In our first naive implementation, we simply introduced a minus dry run option and we interpreted this in the program CS directly. So if dry run was given, we simply passed the email client as null, otherwise we passed the real email client, and we also passed on the dry run option into the test database implementation as well as the TFS implementation, which is acting as our defect database. And we even passed it to the test failure processor to do some logging instead of the actual defect creation. If we look into the test database client, we interpreted the dry run flag in a way that all read operations still worked as expected, but all update operations simply didn't do anything. If we check the TFS client, we will basically see the same pattern. All read operations would be used as is, all update or create operations would interpret this bool flag and basically do nothing. This implementation is simple in that sense that Every developer can understand what a bool flag is and how a condition and if condition should be read. And of course, it works. But of course, this very simple implementation also has its drawbacks. The major concern is probably that this design is not prepared for future changes. Wherever we want to use the email client later on to send further emails, we have to remember that it might be null. And also every new developer joining the project has to remember that across the entire code base. Similar for the TFS client implementation as well as the test database implementation. Whenever we enhance these classes, we have to be aware of this bool flag and we have to properly handle it so that we do not accidentally update anything or create anything or create any IO side effect in case the dry run option is set. So isn't there a better way, a more future-proof way of integrating the dry run functionality into our code base? Well, there's a pattern called null object pattern, which seems to be quite handy here. So what is the null object pattern? Imagine we have an interface like this iMail client and the real implementation mail client, which interacts with a real mail server. Instead of passing real null around our code base, we will have another implementation, the null mail client of our iMail client interface, but this implementation has the same semantics as null. So in this case, it means it simply doesn't do anything. It is basically an empty implementation. So the null object pattern simulates the semantics of null, of not having a real implementation or of not having a real value without actually using null or a null pointer or a null reference. And when using this pattern, we can simulate the behavior of not having a real mail client implementation without having the need for any null checks or the risk of any null reference exception or the risk of creating any unwanted IO side effects. As we already have an interface for our mail client, we can simply implement a new null mail client here. which of course needs to implement I mail client. And the semantics of null here in this case would be simply don't do anything. 
Let's reformat the code. I want this to be iMail client. And we have converted our code to the null object pattern. Now this of course means we can remove any null checks we might have here in our business logic. Here we have one, this is now no longer needed. And of course, also the problem you have seen in the intro of this video is now gone, which is we missed earlier the null check here in this line of code. That's it for the mail client. It is that simple. We just needed that one class and we don't have to worry about any null reference exceptions or any unwanted side effects any longer. Okay, what about the test database client? In the dry run mode, we still want to use the original code to query the test run database, but then on any write or update operations, we want to avoid operating with the database at all. So we cannot simply replace the entire implementation of the interface with a complete null object. So in this case, let's do something else. We decide to split the iTest database interface into a iTest database reader and a iTest database writer interface. This way we clearly separate reading and writing in the design and we can later continue reusing the read code even in the dry run mode and could then replace the write code with a null object. And this separation of concerns might be even useful for further refactorings in that project. So let's do this. Okay, we are done. We do not have to pass the dry run option into the database client and do not have to risk any longer that we miss this check for that bool flag in some places or in some future updates. We clearly decide during composition of the whole application whether we will have a real writer or just a null writer. Of course, this refactoring has a side effect on our business logic. We now have to deal with two dependencies instead of one. But as already stated, it's a clear separation of concerns and maybe this is even helpful for further refactorings later on. So what about the TFS client? It also uses the dry run flag as of now. Let's assume this time we want to keep a single interface iDefect repository for reading and writing for some reason. Now what do we do? One approach could be to mix the null object pattern with a decorator pattern and we create a TFS read-only client which reuses all the reading code from the actual implementation but again just doesn't do anything on any write operation. So let's try that.
And we are done. And we are no longer passing is try run flag to the TFS client any longer. The TFS read only client only reads data from TFS, never updates any data to TFS. This design might not be as clean as the real reader writer separation, but it is also not as dangerous as the bool flag based design. And it might be a good compromise between the both. So I wanted to share this with you here. So at this point, we have all the code which deals with the dry run option pretty much encapsulated in the program CS. We decided just that place how the system should behave in case this dry run option is given. There is just one case left, which is the test failure processor, which still takes this bool flag here to finally decide that if this flag is passed as true, that we do all the logging here instead of really creating any IO side effects like writing defects. So how could we avoid the occurrence of this bool flag as well? One idea could be to replace our TFS read only client with one which does the logging instead of writing to the TFS. So let's change this. Now we have really moved all the handling of the dry run parameter into our program CS. So that means during composition of the application, we completely decide how the application should behave later on according to this flag. And this way we even made the test failure processor, the core business logic, much cleaner because it doesn't need to know about this special mode at all. That's it for today. We have seen that passing bool flags and nulls around the code base is a design smell which will for sure create headache for future changes in this code base and that we can easily avoid this using the null object patterns and derivations of it. And if you are now interested in how to integrate a new variation into your project without breaking existing functionality, then watch this video next.